So now we're going to operate the Spinzol in continuous mode, which means we're going to pump product through it while it's spinning. This increases the capacity of your unit because you don't have to empty it and reload it all the time. But it doesn't clarify quite as quickly per liter, right? Because you have to pump it slowly or it goes cloudy. It also doesn't get quite as clear as you get uh, from batch mode, and we'll, we'll show you that. So now, the uh, first thing you have to decide when you're uh, doing this is are you going to start with an empty rotor or are you going to start with a full rotor? So certain products like bananas and rum, which are called banana justino, all the banana hits to the bottom of the, um, of the thing, and so you can start with a full rotor because you're not worried about stuff that's floating. What I have here is strawberry. Strawberry has a lot of particles in it that tend to float. So in fact, when you're clarifying strawberry in a big centrifuge, you get a mat of like floating strawberry gunk. And that stuff, because it floats, you can't run continuous on it uh, and have it float out. It'll ruin your product. So we start something like strawberry with an empty rotor. Anytime you have a lot of floating stuff, start with an empty rotor. Anytime you have something that you know everything's going to sink to the bottom, start with a full rotor because it's, uh, it's, not gonna, it's just going to save you time. Okay, and remember, if you were going to start with a full rotor, it's especially important when you're running in continuous mode to not go above the max fill line because you don't want cloudy stuff spilling out into your rotor before it has time to clarify. And also, if you start with a full rotor, you want this thing to be spinning for about a minute or so uh, at full speed before you start adding product or it's going to be cloudy. Now, also in continuous mode, it's super important that this gasket be in place. If this gasket's not in place and if this lid on the tube feeder is not locked in properly, liquid will spill out of it. Cloudy liquid will spill out and everything will get ruined. Lastly, you have to make a choice of whether you're going to put on these extenders. The problem with the extenders, frankly, is that they can tend to come off if they're even a little bit uh, greasy or if they run a long time when there's no liquid in the rotor. Once liquid's in the rotor, they tend to stay on, but they, they have a tendency to come off. The reason they're there is they inject the liquid closer to the inside of the rotor, which means that uh, you have more time for it to clarify, but they often come off. That said, I'm gonna put them on and hope that they don't come off too well, too much. Remember, it's all or nothing. You need to put all of them on. And you must have this running when you're doing uh, continuous mode. You must have the tube feeder. If you don't have the tube feeder on, the liquid's just going to hit the rotor and spray out and not clarify. Remember also, all three fins in. Make sure the bite's pointed down. Put in, verify. You have all three. We have the um, tube feeder in place. Okay, put it in, make sure the bowl is on and locked. Make sure that this, this feeder is going to, this uh, shoot extender is going to stop liquid from splashing. You don't need it, but um, I like to run with it on. Just make sure that it's not touching your rotor in any way. In fact, before you start, you might want to Yep, just verify that it turns up to speed in time, right? So there's nothing um, wrong with this. It's ready to go. When you're running continuous, you want to put the cap on because we're going to use this pump. I'm going to show you in a minute to pump product through. Now, I don't know if you can see this on camera. This is a strawberry, but we treated this with Pectinex Ultra SPL and it's got what I like to call a break. You can see clear parts uh, in between the, the cloudy bits, and that's really the sign that it's gonna clarify well. You should look at the recipe section for more on this. Start your rotor. Now, because I'm gonna fill the rotor as quickly as possible, this is the pump speed knob. I'm gonna make the pump go as fast as I can, because I'm just trying to fill the rotor. You put this tube into your product, and notice it immediately starts pumping the strawberry puree up and putting it into the rotor. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is, this is just condensation from when we just washed the rotor. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is leave it uh, going as fast as it can for about, uh, three to four minutes. That's going to fill your rotor up almost all the way and then you're going to put it on slow. So
so that you're not pushing too much product through it and making it cloudy. Now different products clarify at different rates, so different products you can have go faster or slower when you're clarifying, but if you turn this knob up too fast when it's actually running, you'll just you'll make your product uh, cloudy. And once you put a cloudy product out here, it's hard to fully clarify, so it's better to just add it back to your main batch and start again. While we're waiting for this to go, I'm going to make some points on doing continuous work. So in batch mode, obviously, your batch is your batch. 480 milliliters is what you can put in. So you know exactly how much um, stuff you can put into a batch mode. When you're running continuous mode, the amount of product that you can actually do in one go really depends on a bunch of factors. One, how much, how much solids are there in the product to begin with. Because as soon as the solids start spilling up over the edge, right, then you're done. The product's going to be cloudy and you have to, uh, you know, clean your rotor out and start again. So on orange juice, this is gallons, gallons. Uh, in strawberry, maybe it's only a couple of liters before you start getting places where you've built up enough solids and it starts spilling out. The other thing you have to worry about is filling up this, the tube feeder. There's a lip on the tube feeder here that stops uh, liquids from spilling up and over. And this is designed to get all the floaty bits. Let me turn this down. It's been about the amount of time. You can actually look in and see when it's about to spill out of the rotor. So I'm just going to turn the speed um, down to a slower speed. The floaty bits get stuck here, and this is what actually catches the floaty bits. So if you have something like strawberry that has a lot of floaty bits, it tends to fill up this portion of the rotor first. And so this is actually what makes you stop, not this. So it's these two things, how uh, many so much solids are in your rotor and how many floating particles you have in your tube feeder that really determine what the volume on any particular batch is. It's also a good idea to sometimes, if you have like a, a, a coffee filter or disposable, I use the disposable coffee filters with the um, mesh on them to catch here. Not necessarily for particles, but it tends to get air out. So a lot of the cloudiness you're going to see at the beginning when it comes out is actually just air from it hitting violently on the side of the spinzol. And that clear, uh, putting that through a towel on the way down to your uh, product can really help just knock some of those air bubbles out so that you can tell the difference between an air bubble and actual cloudiness because you didn't clarify properly. All right, and now go wherever you want, step aside, wait for it to finish and then we'll show you how to stop continuous mode.